Hello. In this video, we introduced the delta function and we use it in the next uh, videos to analyze uh, mixed random variables. So remember that there are three kinds of random variables, discrete, continuous, and mixed. And we have already seen that we can use a CDF to analyze all of them. Also, we have seen that when we are dealing with discrete random variables, it is often easier to deal with, to you know, use a probability mass function. And uh, for the continuous random variables, we had the concept of the PDF. Now, what we want to do is, we want to extend the concept of the PDF the, uh, to uh, discrete and mixed random variables. So, basically, what we're going to call it, we're going to call it generalized PDF. And we can accomplish this using the delta function. So if you have already seen the delta function and know its properties, uh, you can skip this video and go to the next one directly. So basically what we are trying to do here is that using the delta function, uh, we want to generalize the concept of the PDF to uh, discrete and mixed random variables. And uh, the reason for doing that is because delta function uh, usually gives us a convenient method uh, for analyzing mixed random variables. I should mention that uh, here I don't worry too much about mathematical technicalities, so this is not really a rigorous presentation. Um, uh, it is going to be more intuitive, and but anyway, as I said, uh, the, this uh, tool, the delta function, uh, usually simplifies our analysis, so it's useful. Okay. Remember that the CDF of a random variable x is defined as the probability that the random variable x is less than or equal to the value x. And uh, for, this, for continuous random variables, we had a PDF, which was the derivative of the CDF. Now, let's assume that I have a discrete random variables, which means that you know, the random variable x is discrete, uh, which means that it, you know, it has a range x1, x2, x3. So these values are the uh, possible values of x. And if you want to pull out the CDF, we obtain a, stair a staircase function. So basically, it's, uh, you know, if I want to pull out the CDF, this is x1, x2, x3, and so on. Then the CDF is 0 before x1, and then it jumps to the probability of x1, and then another jump at x2, and so on. And the value of each jump is the probability at that point. So this is px of x1. So what we can do, we can write the CDF of this random variable as px of x1 ux minus x1 plus px of x2 ux minus x2 plus px of x3 ux minus x3 and so on. Here, the, the u is the unit step function. So u of x is basically 1 for x larger than 0 and 0 otherwise. So u, u looks like this. So this is u of x. So what, what I have done here is that basically this function, I have written it as a function at x, uh, you know, a px of x1 times u of x minus x1 plus another function px of x2 u x minus x2 and so on. Now, suppose that, you know, th what is the problem here if I want to have a PDF? Well, one way of looking at it is that the CDF is not continuous. It, we have jumps in the CDF, right? And, of course, that means that this function is not differentiable, so I cannot differentiate it to obtain a PDF. So what we're going to do here, we're going to cheat a little bit. So we try to define uh, a function that is the derivative of this uh, CDF here. So how do we do this? Well, if I want to have a derivative of this CDF here, it suffices to find the derivative of this U functions, right? These are just constant, Px of x1, Px of x2, the probability at those points. So if somehow I can differentiate this U function, I can differentiate the CDF. And that's the idea behind the delta function. So basically, the delta function is basically, can be think of as the derivative of the U function, um, 
And what it means is that when we take the derivative here, we can obtain the PDF for this random variable. So it becomes Px of x1, delta of x minus x1 plus Px of x2, delta of x minus x2, and so on. Again, I don't worry too much about mathematical technicalities here, and I try to give a, uh, an intuitive presentation. So how do we define a derivative for this u function? Well, u is discontinuous at point 0. So what we're going to do, we're going to make it continuous. So instead of jumping from 0 to 1 at point 0, we're going to say that we go gradually from 0 to 1 in an interval of length alpha. OK, so we instead of that function, we define a function instead of u of x, we define a function u sub alpha of x that goes from ma minus alpha over 2 to plus alpha over 2 in this interval, uh, it goes from 0 to 1. And we call it u alpha. And we, has, we, you know, we have in mind that alpha is a small number. So then we have a continuous function. And actually, we can differentiate it. Yeah, it's not differentiable at these uh, you know, endpoints. But other than that, uh, you know, it's a differentiable function. So basically, if this is my u, I'm going to replace it with u alpha, with this function. Now I can take its derivative and call this derivative delta alpha. And we assume that alpha is very small. In particular, note that uh, u of x can be the limit as alpha goes to 0, u alpha of x. So looking at this, we define the delta function as the limit as alpha goes to 0, delta alpha of x. Right? So this is the derivative. And uh, if you think about it, uh, when we take the limit, what do we get? Well, 1 over alpha you know, goes to infinity. So this becomes infinity if, if x is 0 at point 0. And for all other points, because this, remember, this function becomes narrower and narrower. Because this length is alpha, and when alpha goes to 0, the this interval, uh, length of this interval goes to 0. So for any other value, the this limit of, uh, you know, delta alpha x becomes 0. So to summarize, what we have here is that we had this u function. We define this u alpha. We just uh, made this function uh, continuous, and uh, we we made this definition in a way that u of x was the limit of u alpha. And then uh, that way we could differentiate u alpha. And then uh, for very alpha, very small, when alpha goes to 0, we define delta of x as the limit of alpha goes to 0, delta alpha of x. And since um, delta alpha is the derivative of u alpha, we kind of claim or say that delta of x is the derivative of the u of. So again, note that this is not really derivative in the traditional sense, uh, but as I said, the concept is intuitive and is very useful, as we will see. In reality, when we refer to delta, the function delta x, we have in mind the function delta alpha x for very small alphas. In other words, we are looking at this function here when alpha becomes small. So let me just draw it again. So basically, to better draw it, I, I should draw it very narrowly. So it goes from mi minus alpha over 2 to alpha over 2, and the height is 1 over alpha. So for very small alpha, this is kind of an approximation to delta of x. So in fact, uh, any property of the delta function that we uh, see is uh, obtained by looking at this kind of um, uh, limit, uh, you know, for looking, uh, by looking at this function when alpha becomes a small. For example, the area under delta alpha of x is equal to 1, right? If you think about it, this is alpha times 1 over alpha becomes 1. So the integral of, of, of delta of x dx is equal from minus infinity to plus infinity is equal to 1. In fact, uh, when we take the integral from minus epsilon to any epsilon when epsilon is positive, this integral is also 1. A very useful property 
uh, of the delta function that we will use is we are uh, looking at this integral uh, integrals of this form when we have a function some function g of x which is which we assume is continuous times delta a shifted version of the delta dx by the way the notation for the delta function is this so it's zero everywhere at, at point zero becomes infinity and we show it like this so when we are, when i have an integral of this form what i mean is i'm looking at the limit as alpha goes to zero the integral of g of x delta alpha of x minus x zero dx and it's not difficult to see what the value of this integral is uh, in particular uh, note that the delta again is like this minus alpha over two alpha over two the value is one over alpha when you multiply it by g of x you get something like this and you know it's going to be zero everywhere else now note that this interval is very small and g is a continuous function so basically uh, oh, sorry this point is x zero because we are multiplying by the shifted version of uh, delta so this is x zero plus alpha over two this point is x zero minus alpha over two and the middle point is basically x zero so as I was as I, as I was saying, this you know alpha is very small, so we can approximate this as one over alpha times g of x zero. Now, uh, if you integrate this function, the area under that is basically one over alpha g of x zero times the length of the interval, which is alpha, so it becomes uh, g of x zero. So this limit becomes g of x zero, and as you will see. This is a useful property of the delta function that we use you know, when we are analyzing mixed random variables. So, to summarize, what we need to know about the delta function is this box here. So, all you need to know uh, in for, uh, about the delta function when analyzing mixed random variables is uh, what I have summarized in this box. Basically, the delta function uh, is an object with the following properties. Uh, you know, it's infinity at zero, zero otherwise. Uh, we can think of it as the derivative of the unit step uh, uh, function, and we show it like this. The integral uh, of the delta uh, x dx is equal to one, uh, and for uh, uh, any continuous function g of x, when we are, we are looking at an integral of this form, the value is just gx of zero. So when we shift, you know, for example, if I uh, ask you what is 2x squared times delta x minus 1 dx, uh, integral from minus infinity to plus infinity, what are you going to say that, okay, um, here x zero is equal to 1, so I just put, uh, you know, 2x squared uh, and x zero is equal to 1, so it becomes 2 times 1 becomes 2. Um, so we're going to use uh, this delta function in the next video to analyze mixed random variables. As I said, uh, let me just stress here that using the delta function in analyzing mixed random variables is not really necessary. Uh, we have already seen in the previous video how to analyze mixed random variables. But as you will see, using the delta function kind of simplifies the analysis and is uh, actually in intuitive. So it's a useful tool that is um, used often when we are dealing with these mixed random variables.